Hello. Hi. Hello. Yeah. Very good. You can hear me? Yes. 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 You are Dimity? Oh. Hmm. Then Anaya, Dimity, Dasun, Nivan, Ah. Very good. Today, today I like to start with something uh, different. You listen to this first. Evang me sutang ekang samayang bhagava savatiyang viharati jetavane anatapindi kasarami atako anyatara devata abhikantaya ratiya abhikantaya Kantavanna kevala kappam jetvanam Obhasetva yena bhagavate nupasankami Upasankami tva bhagavantam abhivaditva Ekamantam attasi Ekamantan tita ko sa divata bhagavantan gata ye ajbasi bahudeva manusa ce mangalani achintayun akankamana sotanam bruhi mangalamutaman Asivana ca balanam pandita nan ca sevana Puja ca puja niya nan etan mangala mutta man Are you familiar with this chanting? Any of you? No? Yes. You are familiar with that? No. Yeah. And uh, this is Mangala Sutta. Mangala Sutta. We chant Mangala Sutta, Radhana Sutta and Karaniya Sutta every day in many houses. Some people recite this occasionally. Mangala Sutta and I am going to talk on Mangala Sutta from now on. The, you heard this Pali. I am sure you may not understand the meaning. Today I am going to give you the meaning. So you have to remember that. <coughs> the first part you listen to means, I just simply say, thus have I heard on one occasion the sublime one was living near Savati at Jeta's grove in the park of Anatha Pindika. Then in the middle of the night a certain deity of astounding beauty lighting up the entire Jeta's grove, approached the sublime one. Drawing near, she paid homage to the sublime one and stood to one side. Standing thus, the deity addressed the sublime one in verses. So you understand that part, right, in English. Who is the sublime one? Who is the sublime one? The Buddha. So in the middle of a night, certain deity 
came to see the Buddha and paid respect to him and stood to one side. And then <coughs> she spoke to the Buddha in verses, in Pali sort of poetry. What is what she said? She said in Pali Bahudeva Manusacha Mangalani Achintayum Akankamana Sotanam Bruhi Mangala Muttama. You don't understand that part. But the meaning of what she said is many deities and humans have pondered on blessings, desiring their well-being, tell me the blessing supreme. So what she said, at that time there were people Deities all began to think of what the blessings are. Blessing. You, you all like blessings. And we must understand what these blessings are. And whenever you, res you hear this chanting at your home anytime, you must think of the meaning of these words. Today I take only one of them. In this, when she asked this question or requested the Buddha to tell her on behalf of all deities and humans, what the blessings are. Then Buddha said in his reply, this is very, very important to remember. He said, Asevanacha <coughs> Balanam Panditanancha Sevana Pujacha Pujaniyanam Etam Mangala Muttabam. Either you remember this, memorize it, or write it down. I, I say very slowly. You Can you raise your hand if you know this stanza? Any of you? Ah, you know. Anaya. You are Anaya? Yeah, I'm Anaya. Okay, that's very good. You know the stanza, and everybody try to remember them. Remember this stanza in Pali. Asevanaja Balana, number one, Buddha said, not uh, uh, to associate not with the fools, with the foolish. Not associating with the foolish is a blessing. Blessing. I take that today as a topic of my talk. Don't associate with the fools. <laughs> then you must ask, who are the fools? Who are the foolish, foolish people? Foolish people, they are the ones who bring fear. If 
somebody brings fear to you, he is a fool. He is not a wise person. Whatever the danger, whatever the fear, people, human beings have, that danger, that fear comes from a fool. Foolish persons bring fear to you because he does not understand that, that you don't like fear. The fool does something to you that you don't like. As Buddha said, don't associate with them. Don't associate with someone who brings fear to you. Everybody has fear. And if somebody wants to bring more fear, that person is not a good person, he's a, he's a fool because he doesn't understand your peace, happiness and he makes you unhappy. If somebody makes you unhappy by bringing fear, he's a foolish person. He brings danger. Whatever the danger is in the world, that danger is brought to us by a fool. And therefore don't associate with those people who put you in danger. Who likes to be in danger? Nobody likes to be in danger. We all like to be in safe, safe place, safe situation, safe environment. Nobody likes to be in dangerous place. Nobody likes to have danger. If somebody brings danger to us, he is a fool. Don't associate with them, Buddha said. Not associating with such a person is a blessing. Is a blessing. <clears throat> then, the fool brings calamity. You may write down these things that I say. How you know fool? Number one, fool brings you fear. Number two, fool brings you danger. Fool put you in danger. Number three, fool bring you calamity. Fool doesn't bring you security. Then, fool bring you misfortune not good fortune. Don't associate with them. And when you are uh, full of misfortune, your life is not happy. Then <clears throat> just, uh, Buddha said, uh, just uh, as fire that start in a house made of reeds or grass burns down even 
a house with peaked roof, plastered inside and out, draft free, with bolts fastened and shuttered closed, so to whatever peril, danger arise, all arise on account of a fool. Just like fire, when started in a house, no matter how good the house is, that fire burns down the house. Similarly, the fool can destroy your entire life, physically as well as psychologically. So Buddha said, don't associate with them. And how do we know a fool? In addition to this, there are some other characters, characteristics of fools. There are three characteristics. Try to remember them. Fools can be known through these characteristics. One, his bodily he misbehave, number one. Bodily he misbehave. You know, when somebody mis bodily misbehave, he is inviting danger. The police will catch him. Police will take him to the court. Court put him to jail. And that person's life is miserable. He does not know. He does not know that when he does something bodily, something very bad bodily, he is going to get into trouble. He does not know. Number two of his characteristic, characteristic, number two, first physical, second verbal. Verbal misconduct. What is the verbal misconduct? Remember at the beginning of right understanding I said telling lies, slanderous talk, harsh speech and gossip. These are the four things one does with mouth and a fool does all of them. That is verbal misconduct. physical misconduct, then verbal misconduct. Then a fool has mental misconduct. What is the mes mental misconduct? He, cons he has hatred, greed, jealousy, he builds up tension, he builds up anxiety, he has wrong views, wrong views. These are his mental misconduct. So a fool has physical misconduct, verbal misconduct and mental misconduct. Don't associate with them. When you associate with a fool, you will be a fool. That is not a blessing. <laughs> when you associate with a fool, you like to be a foolish, you like to be get into trouble, you like to make your life miserable, unhappy, so don't associate with them. 
leave them alone. Don't associate with them in order to be happy. And then, uh, when fools have this characteristic, his uh, uh, bodily, verbal, and uh, mental uh, conduct is very bad. He behaves badly, he speaks badly, and he thinks badly. His mind is polluted, his life is polluted, his thinking is polluted. So all his life, he makes it miserable. <coughs> then, next thing is a fool does not admit that he makes mistakes. He does not admit that he commit a crime. He thinks what he does is right thing. He does not accept crime as a crime. And he sees when he commit a crime, he commits an offense, he does not apologize. He simply thinks he is right to do whatever he wants to do and never apologize. He is a fool. And he uh, does not care for the Dhamma. He does not care for right things. Does not care for good things. And the fool, when, uh, when another person, suppose somebody uh, commits an offense, when he commits an offense, if somebody correct him, he gets angry. Instead of correcting himself, he gets angry. He is a fool. Don't associate with them. Leave them alone. And next are you writing down all this? Okay, next thing is a fool does things carelessly. Fool does things carelessly. If he does things carelessly, he can make many, many mistakes. He doesn't want to uh, he doesn't want to uh, reply a questions carefully. When you ask a question, he casually answers the question, not carefully. It is just you know, carelessly answer the question. And he makes you upset. He makes you confused without answering your questions carefully. When uh, uh, you ask his questions, Correctly, suppose a person asks you a question, you answer it carefully, 
correctly. He does not accept it because he is so arrogant. And does not he is not very uh, friendly, and therefore don't associate with such fools. By not associating with them, you have a peace of mind. Otherwise, you yourself will be having a lot of mental stress in order to have blessings, have a peaceful life. Buddha said, don't associate with such a person. And he does not care for wholesome things. He even does not know what is wholesome. And therefore he does not do wholesome things. Does not say wholesome things. Does not think wholesome thoughts. And thereby he suffers himself. And makes you suffer. So the Buddha said therefore don't associate with them. And then, whatever he does, he, that is an, a blameworthy thing. Bodily action is blameworthy. His, his speech is blameworthy. His thoughts are blameworthy, not praiseworthy. not respect accepted by the civil society. Associating with such a person makes your life very, very uh, miserable, unhappy, and don't associate with them. Then his physical qualities it should be known as fools. What are they? His, his, his uh, afflictive bodily action. Afflictive bodily action. He commits afflictive verbal action. He commits afflictive mental actions. And he is he is known by this afflictive thoughts, words, and deeds. He has don't associate with him, with such a person. Then, uh, a fool maintain himself amidst of maintain his own misbehavior thinking that it is right. He maintained his verbal misbehavior thinking that it is right. He maintained his mental misbehavior thinking that it is right. And therefore his entire life is full of false problems. And Buddha said, therefore don't associate with such a person. And if a fool, if a fool thinks he is wise, for that very reason he is a fool. <laughs> because he thinks he is wise. If a fool thinks that he is a fool 
For that very reason he is wise. Very important thing to remember. Let me repeat that this very important message to remember. If a fool thinks that he is wise, for that very reason he is a fool. If a fool thinks that he is fool, for that very reason he becomes a wise. He is wise. And if a fool associates with the wise for his entire life, he never learned anything from the wise. It is just like a spoon. You use a spoon to stir your soup. But that spoon never tastes soup because it is a spoon. Similarly, if a fool associates with the wise for his entire life, he never becomes wise. If a wise associates with the wise, he learns very quickly. Just like a tongue tastes food, you just have to put anything into a tongue, immediately you taste the food or soup. And, and therefore, uh, try not to associate with the fool. A fool does very bad, unwholesome things, thinking that he will not be responsible for that. He thinks he is doing something very wise. When he is doing something very bad, he thinks that he is doing something good. But he, he thinks that it is so sweet, good. He is doing something very bad, but he thinks it is good. But when, he, when the time comes for him to bear the fruit of his bad deed, he will suffer untold degree of suffering. It is just like a, uh, what do you call a, a, a crab. Crab, uh, you know, people get crab's meat uh, by uh, boiling the crab alive. When they put the crab into the water, pot which is on the stove until the water start boiling the crab will enjoy being in the water as soon as water start boiling then crab begin to feel the heat and eventually die. Similarly, a fool does things and enjoy that foolish thing until the results begin to appear, until he bears the fruit of his bad deeds. So, so as long as evil did Evil deeds do not produce results, fool enjoys it. When he 
begins to bear the fruit of his misdeed, he will suffer. So, for him, bodily action, verbal actions and mental actions are sweet when he was doing it. But when he bears the fruit, he will suffer. So the Buddha said, don't associate with such a fool. When the deity asked him, asked him to tell the blessings, Buddha gave 38 blessings. This is one blessing. What is the first blessing? Don't associate with the fool. And these are the qualities of a fool. Children, this is very important lesson to remember. This, don't forget this and keep this in mind. You have whole life in you and you have to select wise person to associate with. Don't associate with fools. Leave them alone. Hold them at your hand's length. Bring, don't bring close to you. So now, friends, as I plan to do, today I spoke a little longer because uh, this is the uh, very, very important uh, discourse that you all recite. You recite, your parents recite, monks come to your house, they recite, go to the temple, they recite. This discourse called Maha Mangala Sutta. Maha Mangala Sutta. Therefore, it is very important for you to learn the meaning of this Sutta and the blessings. Children, blessing doesn't come from heaven upon us. Blessing doesn't come to us from outside. We develop blessings within us. We develop blessing within us by doing right thing. Number one of the right things is not to associate with the fools. Next week, I talk about the about the wise. Today I spoke about the fools, and the Buddha asked us to associate with the wise. Avoid fools is a blessing. Associating with the wise is a blessing. Now, next week I will talk about the wise. Who is the wise? And uh, now it is, we have about uh, 20 minutes. Today I gave you a shorter time to ask me a question. You can ask me a question now. Okay. Yes. Okay. Dinati. Yes. What is your question? Um, I just wanted to know um, if you could repeat the Gatava that, uh, like the, um, like the Pali. Thing on that the the um um that the um uh like like remember someone said something to the sadhu? Can you like repeat it? Like okay, okay. Let let me repeat it. My uh, first is 
the deity went to the Buddha. From there I started talk, start talking. Okay? Evang me sutang ekang samayang bhagava savatthyang viharati jetavane anath pindikas arame atako anyatara devata abhikantaya ratya Abhikanta vanna kevala kappang jetavanang obhasetva yena bhagava ten upasankami upasankamitva bhagavantam abhivaditva ekamantam attasi ekamantam thitakho sa devata Bhagavantam Gathaya Ajabhasi Bahudeva Manusacha Mangalani Achintayung Akankamana Sottanam Bruhi Mangala Muttamam Asevanacha Balanam Panditanancha Sevana Pujaja Pujaniya Nang Etang Mangala Muttamang. Okay? I said, I explained up to here. Okay, thank you. You are welcome. You, rem- you, rem- you know the, uh, this discourse, this sutta? You have heard of it? I think I've heard of it. Okay. If it is very good if you memorize it so that you can recite it and anybody yes you yes what is siluni oh yeah what is your name my name is banal you know yeah tell me the what is what is your question? question so if a person brings like fear to someone yeah uh, how does that make them a fool because if someone just walks by someone and they feel fear or scared of that person that that doesn't make them foolish because they could also be a nice guy too you know when somebody brings fear to you uh you you will not be happy so he makes you unhappy if somebody does something to make somebody unhappy he is fool is a fool why because he does not understand your suffering from fear and he may he cultivate that and keep repeating it. He keeps repeating frightening people and then one day he will be he will get into deep trouble because somebody else may not be tolerant like you that person will get even upset, angry, and he might get into fight, perhaps maybe physical fight or verbal fight, and thereby create anger, hatred, and so forth. So, it is the fool who starts this sort of unnecessary, unimportant thing to bring fear to somebody. Say, for instance, uh, somebody is a murderer. In Suppose there is a murderer in your neighborhood. Everybody is afraid of living in that neighborhood because you don't know when this person come and attack you. 
So you, he, he implanted or inculcates fear in you and you may, he makes you unhappy. Instead of making you peaceful and happy, he makes you unhappy. That is how he becomes a fool. Okay? Where are you? You ran away? <laughs> you understand? Yes. Good. You don't hesitate to ask question. Good question. Okay? This is your sister? Yeah. That is your sister. Okay. Uh, Siluni is the sister. You are Biran. Bina, yes. eh? Bina. Okay. Anybody else has any other question? Um, Bhante, I have a question. Yeah? So, if you, um, if you, like, go with a fool, will you become a wise person to a fool too? Yes. If you don't associate with the fool, you can become a wise person very easily because you don't waste your time uh, thinking about the fool that brings you unhappiness your mind is in mind is peaceful when your mind is peaceful you can uh, have peaceful experience and you remain very calm, relaxed, and that makes you, that, that brings you patience, understanding, and thereby you learn to be wise. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. You are welcome. You are Anaya? Yeah. Anaya Koswat. Yes, I can see your name. Okay, anybody else? Yes. Nelit? Yes. Nelit? Yes. Yeah. Hi, Bante. I have a question. So, a, a fool brings unhappiness to one person, but what happens if that fool can also bring happiness to another person? Like, how do those two, can those two properties uh, coincide? Uh, Nelit, you speak little... Uh, loudly, you speak very softly, <laughs> very low voice, make it little louder. So one person that may bring unhappiness to another person, but can also bring happiness to other uh, to another person, can uh -huh. those two properties come? One person can make the other person unhappy? Yes, but can also bring joy to another person. Ah, oh, okay. Now, if somebody makes one person unhappy and brings joy to the other happy person, uh, that person, we have to understand what kind of joy he brings to the other person. Is it right type of joy or joy by hurting somebody else? Suppose, uh, someone makes you unhappy and uh, that person makes someone else happy, then the reason why he makes you unhappy is not reasonable, good reason. He has no right to make you unhappy he can has he can have right to make anybody happy but the person doesn't have any reason any uh, uh, reason to make anybody unhappy he has no right to make anybody unhappy everybody likes to be happy and therefore everybody must learn to make everybody happy 
nobody likes to be unhappy. Even if the person makes you unhappy and another person happy, still he is a fool because he made at least one person unhappy. Okay? Okay, thank you, Bhante. You are welcome. <coughs> Bhante, I have a question. Yeah? You mentioned that a wise person thinks he is a fool, so I don't really understand how it makes sense because if the person thinks like he is a fool, then doesn't that make the person himself foolish? Okay. What I said was, if a fool thinks that he is wise, for that reason he is a fool. <laughs> because, <laughs> understand? Fools thinks that he is a wise person. <laughs> because of his foolishness he thinks he is wise. And therefore he is a fool. However, if the fool thinks that he is foolish, if the fool thinks that he is foolish, for that reason he becomes wise. Because he admits, he knows that he is foolish, then he tries to correct himself. Then he tries to learn. And then he can avoid, overcome his foolishness. If he thinks that uh, he is... Uh, he is a foolish, but he thinks he is wise. He can never correct himself. Okay? Okay, I understand. Thank you, Bhante. <laughs> you are welcome. Uh, anybody else has any other question? Yeah. All of you are good today, uh, asking questions. Uh, we must have a very lively discussion. Uh, we can have lively discussion if you ask me questions. Yes. Bhante, I have a question. Yes, Chandima, yes. Yes. Um, sometimes, uh, unfortunately, you have to deal with uh, kind of fools in your workplace, in your life. Uh, it is sometimes impossible to stay away with them. Um, so what is your advice when you see somebody but you can't uh, run away from them because they are part of your class or workplace? Uh, so how do we kind of uh, stay strong without uh, getting uh, miserable? All right. Uh wise person uh, tries always uh, to be very, very patient. Wise person must learn techniques to associate with someone who is not very wise. The kind of fools that I mentioned are almost incorrigible. They cannot be corrected. They do not admit that they are doing foolish things. Uh, such a incorrigible person should be avoided by all means. In your workplace, perhaps sometimes you may have a boss who is doing all sort of foolish things. You have to maintain your job, you have to go to work every day, then that fool can make you even more miserable, unhappy. In situations like this, you have to be very tactful, you have to be very patient uh, with such a person. 
I think that's how we have to deal with them. But we have our own limitations uh, and therefore try to avoid getting deeply uh, involved in uh, discussion, long conversation and so forth with such a fool. In that way we can uh, uh, avoid their uh, close association. Right? Yes, Bhante. Yeah. And Buddha was so uh, enlightened, he, he knows that uh, ordinary people have to live in regular society with all kind of people, if they really want to practice spiritual matters like dhamma, meditation and so forth, it is always better not to associate with fools whose qualities that I mentioned earlier, who always bring dangers to people who always uh, think that they never make mistakes uh, and so forth, all these qualities that I mentioned earlier. If somebody end out with those qualities, it is better not to associate with such a person. I think in your, when somebody mentioned that how to associate in workplace and so forth, I don't think somebody become your boss, coming to a, that kind of you know situation in life, can be uh, totally foolish, uh, because uh, sometimes they may have some of these things, but they uh, are ready to correct themselves. They have to answer their own conscience, and. Uh, Therefore, the kind of uh, a person that Buddha described in this discourse may not come to that level of uh, being somebody's boss and big executive officer in a company and so forth because he will be uh, left out uh, long before he reaches that stage. On the way he will be, he will be left out or he will be ended up in jail and so forth. So perhaps we we have uh, you might have never encountered such a person in your life, although there may be some people who are difficult to associate with, but they may not fit into the description of a fool that I mentioned earlier. <coughs> okay. Yes, Pante, I just have a one quick question. Now, when we practice metta, uh, it says that uh, practice it, uh, the loving kindness to your family, relatives, even for your enemies, right? So should we be, you know, practicing it, uh, praying for even for the fools uh, around? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know, this is... Uh... This is Chandima? Yes, Pante. Okay, Chandima. Uh, in, for metta practice, there is no limit. That is why it is called illimitable, appamanya in Pali, appamanya. That means no condition. It is unconditional love, unconditional practice. Whether male, female, enemies, friends, parents, children, doesn't matter. We bring all of them into one living, breathing beings. And it is, uh, metta is such a wonderful practice that we do for ourselves. We practice metta for ourselves. When we practice metta, therefore, uh, we cannot find I, one cannot say I practice metta 
for everybody but such a guy. <laughs> we cannot say that. When we practice metta, we have to forget all the differences and uh, don't think individuals at all. Uh, brother, sister, mother, father, friends and children and so forth. Don't categorize them in that way. But we have to think that all beings are living, breathing beings. That kind of mentality you have to have in the first place when you start practicing metta. And then it is your mind that is full of peace, friendliness, happiness and joy because you don't make any discrimination whatsoever. And then your mind will be filled with metta. Okay? I think... Yes, Pante. Oh. Pante, I have one more question. Yeah, yeah. What is that? Uh, so you mentioned that there's 38 blessings and the first one is to mm. not associate with fools and then the second one is to associate with wise. So why is it the other way around? Why did Buddha say the first one is to not associate with fools? I see. You know, first one, he mentioned uh, don't associate with fool because the world is world is full of foolish people, more fools than the wise. And uh, once you avoid them, then your work will be very easy. <clears throat> if you associate with the wise first, then <clears throat> uh, you may not go through the difficulties in recognizing the fool. And that is why I think the Buddha mentioned not to associate with the fools. And also, you know, the background of this discourse is that people uh, were thinking of a kind of blessings. They are called uh, Sutta Mangala, Mutta Mangala, Ditta Mangala and so forth. They thought one things that you see is blessing or that you hear something like good morning, have good health and so forth. Hearing those things, you think you get blessings. But the real blessing doesn't come like that from outside. Real blessing must come from inside. So most people those days were thinking the blessing as something coming from outside. And thinking blessing that comes from outside is a foolish thought. It is the mind, our mind, individual's mind, that generates peace, generates uh, blessings. Uh, it doesn't come from outside. Therefore, thinking of many people's way of uh, thinking of blessing, Buddha said they are not wise individuals. First avoid them and then associate with the wise one. Then you will know. Uh, to develop your uh, blessing correctly. You know, first we have to avoid, even in the uh, precept, first we have to avoid, abstain from uh, doing certain things because our minds, minds are very often uh, bent towards doing wrong things because of our upbringing and therefore we have to overcome those tendencies first in order to put ourselves on the right path and that is that is why the Buddha, Buddha knew that Buddha knew how human minds work first avoid wrong things and then cultivate right thing you see Okay, thank you, Bhante. All right. Thank you. Today we had a lot of questions and that is very good. So, Bhante, okay. actually, 
Uh, but I have a, like a, a request. Uh, so you, during your uh, speeches, you talk a lot about uh, scientific topics. Yeah. So, so some of my colleagues actually, and I myself, like uh, we are interested in having, uh, like uh, asking some questions from you, like it's exclusively based on uh, science that is related to Buddhism. Uh -huh. So can I see that set of questions so that we can have a, like a discussion one day? Okay. Yeah, I'll send you the questions. All right. Okay, thank you. Very good. Today, uh, I wanted to start with this Mangala Sutta for children. Uh, I think that's very important for their uh, growing life to have the good foundation of Buddhist ethics and moral. And Mangala Sutta is one of the best suttas. It slowly builds up until one attains full enlightenment. Things are very gradually built up. So this is just the beginning. Okay? Yeah. All right, then I let you go. Very nice that you came. Invite more children to join. Okay? Bye. Everyone, Saranai, Bante. Everyone, Saranai. Everyone, Saranai. Everyone, Saranai. Everyone, Saranai. Everyone, Saranai. Bye.